We were hoping the Chargers would use the waiver wire to improve the roster, and they did claim one player, linebacker Tanner Muse. You are Locked On Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up and welcome into the Locked On Chargers podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wade, joined as always by my co-host, David Drogemeyer. And we've been covering the Chargers together now for eight seasons, but this is our sixth year as a host of the Locked On Chargers podcast, bringing you your team every day. Thank you guys, as always, for making us your first listen today. And to make sure you never miss the show, go subscribe or follow for free on the Locked On Chargers YouTube channel and listen wherever you get your podcast from. David, what do we got today? Daniel, the Chargers hit the waiver wire and they add another linebacker. Yes, that's right, another linebacker. So we'll have to see how that has an impact on the team here. And we finally get to see how the Chargers fill out their practice squad. Absolutely. I mean, we know how important the practice squad is, especially for a team as banged up as the Chargers annually are. And it seems like, I mean, I feel better, I think, about this year's practice squad, especially because it seems like they went out and got a few more veterans than we're used to seeing. But this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 back in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. So, David... Maybe not who we were expecting, but the Chargers were active on the waiver wire. I mean, we thought they would keep five linebackers on the active roster. It looks like that wasn't enough because the Chargers did claim Tanner Muse off waivers, and they waived 2022 seventh round pick Xander Horvath to make room for him. David, to me, this looks like mostly a special teams move. I mean, someone that Brandon Staley said that Ryan Ficken was you know, really high on coming out of the draft. Also, Brandon Staley liked him a lot. The front office, special teams, everyone seemed to kind of sign off on this dude and bring him in. Yeah, exactly. He said he's a core special teams player in all four phases. He's a guy that's got really good speed, did a lot of work on him coming out of Clemson. And the special teams god, Ryan Ficken, really, (laughs) really liked him. So, hey, if he has the endorsement of Ryan Ficken, then I'm all for it. And you definitely look at the stats for for muse here and he's been all over the special teams units you know punt return kick return kickoff it's you know doesn't matter he's all over the place and it seems like a a guy who's a very very sure tackler yeah i think so i mean it's definitely something that attracted the chargers to him but maybe not as much as the fact that tom telesco just cannot resist a linebacker that used to be a safety and that's exactly (laughs) another thing we have going on here i mean i remember great point (laughs) we watched tanner muse when he was coming out of the draft i mean that's how long we've been doing this now we've you know actually seen most of these guys and how they played in college missed his entire rookie season was drafted in the third round by the raiders in 2020 i thought that was rich then obviously he never even played a snap for them so that one didn't work out another i mean it would be extra you know good if the chargers could like turn tanner muse into some sort of player right and just like you know take the the raiders bad picks and actually get something out of them because the you know the raiders got <laughs> nothing out of this one but yeah i mean I, he played in all 17 games for the seahawks last year right yeah i think if you were going to use him as an actual linebacker he's better off in coverage just because of his size even though he is a pretty sure tackler but he missed all of 2020 and was waived before the start of 2021 but last year he played 80 snaps defensively so Played a little bit, not too much, but over the last couple of years, 421 special team snaps. Not expecting to see much from him defensively, especially since, you know, he's probably the sixth linebacker on this (laughs) roster right now, depending on how the Chargers feel about, you know, Amen and Nick Neiman. Uh, But the interesting thing here, David, is we also found out today that Dayon Henley is injured, right? Supposedly he got injured in the last game against the 49ers. I was trying to pinpoint when it happened. I couldn't figure it out when the actual injury happened because he was playing late in that game because Nick Neiman and Amen Ogbong-Bamiga, Ogbong-Bamiga, that name, our boy Bong, they both played the first half, right? And then, obviously, Dan Henley got in the second half and played really, really well next to Michael Jones. So, yeah, Brandon Staley, David, is saying these two things are totally unrelated. So, I guess it's just kind of how much we believe they have nothing to do with one another. I don't know, Daniel. It seems really, really hard for me to sit here and say that these two moves are unrelated when you have a young linebacker who, by all accounts, has a lot of great skills and things that he brings to the table, but he's got people ahead of him on the depth chart. So his primary application to this roster is going to be on special teams. And so he has a hamstring injury, which 
Brandon Staley says there is no timetable on his return, so they have absolutely no idea mm. when he's going to be coming back. Obviously, they're not telling us at least, yeah. Right, and the Chargers and Brandon Staley have absolutely no incentive to release any information to anybody. You don't want to give anyone any kind of competitive advantage. So I yeah. understand it, but to sit here and tell me that these two moves are unrelated, I'm sorry, Coach. I'm not believing that. It just makes way too much sense. You have a a, a, a rookie linebacker that goes down, and then you replace it with a guy who's going to be filling that same responsibility one it's also because we know that Deion Henley even as a rookie is going to be very involved in special teams yes. obviously Xander Horvath the whole reason he was on the team is because of his special teams right. ability so you know when you have an injured linebacker who plays a ton of special teams you end up bringing in a linebacker as your sixth linebacker right because that's the other important thing here they have yeah. six of them which is something we haven't seen them do very often but at least three of those guys that are you know healthy right now, Muse, Neiman, and Ogbong Gamiga, all those yeah. guys are going to be playing heavily on special teams. But this is the thing. I'll feel better once the first game passes because now yeah. the, the Chargers kept you know Dan Henley on their active 53-man roster. I mean, we know that he's not going to be out for the season or anything right. that extreme, right? But he also still get, could get put on injured reserve right now and have to miss four games. So that's yeah. why you know I want to wait. The next couple of weeks, we'll see what the practice report looks like next week. So obviously, yeah. we're still sitting in week zero. Right. But I'll feel better about it once we see, you know, is he practicing in a limited capacity? Is he just going to be a did not practice all week? Even if he's a DMP all week, but the Chargers don't put him on IR before that first game, which would be one of the four games he'd have to miss if he ends up there. I'll feel a lot better about it. And we'll know, you know, OK, well, it's probably less than four weeks before he comes back. So I think that might be the first time we actually get a real timetable on this. But let's talk about the guy who got waived in favor of Tanner Muse, and it was Xander Horvath, a guy who, David, I think early on we were like, hey, he, he could easily be the outside man here because yeah. Kellen Moore does not use fullbacks in a traditional manner. He was using offensive guards at, as fullbacks when he played yeah, yeah, in Dallas. The, the a lot of tight package, ends, right? The yeah. whole package, the whole thing, yeah. right? But... Xander Horvath was such a good special teams player that we, you know, later on thinking about it, Daniel Popper also brought it up to just core four special teams kind of guy, which means kick return, punt return, kickoff, right, and punt. So, yeah, that was the way he made the roster. But I guess his spot was always kind of up for grabs a little bit, just considering that that was really all he was bringing to the table, probably with special teams. Yeah, especially now with the addition of a fourth running back as well. I mean, he, he was yeah. getting, you know, I mean, those – Short yardage carries every once in a blue moon. I mean, it, it you know yeah. not not really a lot. And he, he after was probably the never going to be part of the offense, and he was probably never going to transition to be a tight end or blocking tight end, right? Like, I mean, right. I think that's what a lot of people thought, and like that was always going to be a, a long shot. Yeah, and 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 so if your only job here is special teams you better be really, really, really good at it. I mean, you better be uh, indispensable at it. And obviously, you know, according to how the Chargers have moved, Xander Horvath was not indispensable, although um, they were they did ask Coach Daly about it, and he said, is the hope to get him back on the practice squad? And he said, yes, that is the hope for sure. So, yeah. I mean, seems like there's a pretty good chance that he's going to end up on, on the practice squad after all, which is cool because, hey, we know that the practice squad guys – will come up and play. I mean, they're still a major part of the team, still very important. Yeah, well, I mean, I remember Derek Watt, right? Derek Watt yeah. would play some offensively, you know, right. sparingly. But sure, he had, like, one season where he led the NFL in special teams tackles, right? So yeah, that's he was how an you kind of make yeah. your worth at that position. And, like, listen, this is a dude that, as a running back, had a higher relative athletic score than Derek Henry when he was yes. coming out. Maybe the most athletic fullback to right. ever Just come out freak. of college. Yeah. Would I have loved to see him get some third and fourth quarter carries just as a running back in the preseason? Definitely. Absolutely. I, I mean, he, I've seen him hurdle like five dudes. I would have loved to see it. I want to see it in the NFL level, man. That would the be team, fun. It just isn't prepared to do that, right? Like, right. And it's just, you know, something that, like, yes, we were excited about him. Seventh round pick. I mean, he made the team his first year. That was a yeah. huge win. That's impressive. He scored the first touchdown of the season last year. So, like, already, I think, a good thing for Man, Xander so Horvath. Quick to he forget gets that, to, huh? yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, and you know, it's because he had like three carries the first three games and like won the rest of the entire yeah. season. But Xander Horvath likely still sticking around. But we have seen the rest of the Chargers practice squad, which is filling up quickly. And there's some definitely familiar names on there. But David, one thing's certain, the Chargers are going outwards and bringing in some veterans to put on that practice squad. And I like it. I get it. Young guys who are going to develop but this is a team that might need some veterans to come in. And they brought a couple of guys that definitely could see time on the active roster this year. So we're going to get into the Chargers setting up their practice squad coming up right after this.
First, though, I do need to tell you guys about FanDuel. Get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. I know, I didn't even tell that to David. That's enough right there. $100 off YouTube TV. I mean, David's probably wishing he didn't already have NFL ticket, but that is a deal and a half. Not only do you get the $200 in bonus bets, $100 off NFL Sunday ticket, which is the closest thing to legal drugs that are out there, right? I mean, being able to sit and watch every single football game, I can't think of anything better. But next week, the Chargers are opening up as two and a half point favorites on FanDuel. But you can also bet on the same game parlays where you bet multiple things in the same game and as well as future bets for Justin Herbert, MVP, the team winning the Super Bowl, and so much more. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use. You can bet on everything from spreads to player props and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, David. Well, one of the things that's always fun after, you know, training camp in the preseason is seeing what the Chargers do with their practice squad. And in most years, I would say the Chargers had a very, you know, similar practice squad to the guys that all got cut <laughs> after their, you know, last yeah. round of cuts. So yeah. this year we are seeing a little bit more newcomers, but let's go over this practice squad and who it is so far. So the Star Chargers announced that they had 12 players on the practice squad, right? Brevin Allen, Andrew Farmer, Keelan Doss, Terrell Bynum, Max Duggan makes it back on the practice squad. Zach Bailey, we'll talk about him later, and Austin Pleasance, as well as Gerard Clark, C.J. Okoye, Christian Covington, which was interesting. We'll get into him making his return. Matt Hankins and Hunter Camp Moyer. But after that, David, we saw them actually bring in wide receiver Alex Erickson and also veteran safety Dean Marlowe. But it does seem like looking at this list, yes, there are some players that are, you know, undrafted free agents. I like that the edge rushers made the practice squad because those guys showed some promise for sure. Yeah. Max Duggan gets to be that kind of. You know, if you are super desperate, you can bring him up from the practice squad and you can continue to develop him because obviously he's super raw. But it yeah. does seem like, you know, there's veterans. It's like three veterans with at least six plus years of experience that they're bringing back on this practice squad. And I think I kind of like that. Yeah, I do, too. I mean, I, I think it's just an upgrade on, on the quality of depth. I mean, and this team has aspirations to do some serious things this year. And so. Yeah. The, the the depth is what separates the great teams from the good teams. And so the Chargers bringing in guys that have NFL experience, also, you know, some familiar faces that understand the system and have, has played in the system. All of those are good things for the Chargers. Just trying to sure up some of those holes that may arise. I mean, that's what this is all about. Yeah, I'm, I think so, too. And I mean, especially when you saw how many practice squad players had to come up and play a role for the Chargers yes. last season, right? Whether it's Braden Fehoko, whether it's you know Jason Moore, or Michael Bandy, or Raheem yeah. Lane, like mm -hmm. those guys get played. There are going to be guys that I just mentioned to you that are going to be playing on Sundays in some capacity for the Chargers, whether it be special teams or they're desperate enough to get in offensively or defensively, right? But yeah. I want to start talking about the newcomers because we've talked about most of the practice squad guys a little bit. We didn't talk about the new guys. So wide receiver Alex Erickson was on the Jets. He's an NFL veteran. He's 30 years old. This was one that was interesting, David. The Chargers on their practice squad already had Keelan Doss and Terrell Bynum, one an undrafted free agent. And Keelan Doss, another veteran who has multiple years of NFL experience. But this guy, David, it seems like would definitely bring some great depth to special teams wise. Yeah, absolutely. I think Alex Erickson primarily is coming in as that punt return, kick return kind of insurance. I mean, obviously, the Chargers love what Darius Davis brings to the table. He has already shown his unique yeah. ability to really impact the game with that crazy 80 plus yard punt return touchdown. We all expect and are excited to see what Darius Davis is capable of, but we also have to understand the reality is that he's 165 pounds. So sure. he's a little bit on the small side, and you just don't know how he's going to be able to hold up over a 17-game season when you are playing one of the most dangerous positions on the football field yeah. where there are, are the best athletes in the world running at you full speed trying to take your head off. So yeah. having somebody that has 
a ton of kick return, punt return experience in his career, over 754 special team snaps, 110 kick returns, 160 punt returns. I love it. I think it's a great move. I think it just makes you feel better. Obviously, you don't want anything to happen to Darius Davis. He is electric, and I want to see everything that he's capable of doing, but it's just smart business to have somebody that can come up and fill in if they need to. And I like it because, like, the Chargers have had so many times where, like, they were just, especially in kickoffs, we're just kind of willing to put whoever back. Yeah, there. just put a guy back there. I mean, Larry yeah. Roundtree was the main KJ kickoff Hill. guy. You have no KJ speed Hill, whatsoever. Absolutely. Like, we, we've seen them kind of cycle through a bunch of guys when they seemed like they didn't care who was back there. Now, right. not only did they go spend a fourth-round pick on Darius Davis, but now you have a guy in the practice squad that you feel like could come up and especially help you on punt return. Maybe yeah. they would give him some run as a kick returner, but they also like Elijah Dotson there too, and he did that in the preseason and had some yep. you know good returns in the preseason. Yeah. So this team continues to kind of put that emphasis on special teams. And as two people that have covered and followed the Chargers right even longer, For a than, long time, you know, twenty five <laughs> years. It's so great to see that, right? Oh, yes. Ryan Ficken gets, you know, a lot of pull seemingly in this organization. The Chargers are empowering him for sure. It's a great thing because it's just yeah. too often the special teams units have been really just cast out to the wayside. And, you know, they haven't, you know, it's been just been put on the back burner. Now it's not. Totally. Now it's it's seen as an equal to offense and defense because they are putting resources into it to make it good. And it's the only reason they made the playoffs last year because they had a good special teams unit. It's facts. If they need him to be a receiver, you know, he does have experience. That his best season was part of the Cincinnati Bengals, 2019, 43 catches, 529 yards that year. But only 15 catches since then. And that was in 2019, right? Also, he's yeah. not going to be a speedster, as I'm sure a lot of you hope, 454 at his pro day. So not necessarily yeah. that guy either. But, I mean, DeAndre Carter had like 10 career receptions when he came to the Chargers. So, it, you know, this is a guy that can serve multiple roles, but it looks like the main kind of backup to Darius Davis and a the guy they don't have to keep on the active roster to do that. So, yeah, late on Wednesday night, the Chargers made another sign to the practice squad. Bridget Condon announced the Chargers have signed Dean Marlowe's a safety to the practice squad. Marlowe played under Brandon Staley when he was the defensive coordinator at James Madison all the way back in 2014. So a little reunion. That's doing your David. research right there. Bro. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> of course, there's a James Madison connection. You know, of course. Brandon Staley, the, the king of you know D3 colleges. Oh, and, yeah. And you know, Ohio specifically, just all that network. But yeah, this is a guy, David, veteran safety depth. Another guy who really played a ton of special teams over his career. I mean, this is a 31-year-old dude. So it's a guy who's been around a little bit, has bounced around practice squad, but has mostly been a reserve safety for most of his career. Yeah, and, and I like this move, too, just because this is one of those position groups where you just didn't really feel too good about the veteran presence that you had in yeah. that room. Obviously, you got Derwin James, one of the best players in the world, and you got Alohi Gilman, who is just kind of starting to be that Robin to, to Batman, right? You know, he just well, you feel better about him in. than anyone else behind him. I mean, there's a yeah. definitive line after Alohi Gilman where your confidence level becomes a lot more question marks, no matter how much you think J.D. Woods has improved. Yeah, you're 100% correct. So it just makes you feel better about the entirety of the safety room. Bringing in a guy who has seven years of NFL experience, has some good size at six foot one, 205 pounds. Um, the most snaps he played in his career was in 2021 with the Lions, where he played 15 games and was pretty even, 283 run defense snaps, 396 coverage snaps, um, but per played pretty well. I mean, he had a low uh, missed tackle percentage, which, which is fantastic. So just adding another veteran to a position group that you just didn't feel 100% good about, I, I think it's just great business. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see how long he stays on the practice squad. I mean, he does. I mean, I think the nice thing, too, is the Bills obviously lined him enough to trade for him last season after he spent a few years there early in his career. They had a couple of safety injuries. I mean, he yeah. was Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde's main backup for yeah. a few years, and then last year they brought him back, and he started both playoff games, right? So obviously they trusted him to do that. But this is interesting because it kind of reminds me, David, of last year when Brayden yeah. Fehoko made the initial roster, and we're like, oh, my God, that's so cool. Right. And now AJ Finley this year is making the main roster. But then right after cuts and everything, the Chargers decided to waive Braden Vehoko and put Christian Covington on the active roster. And it seems like everything's coming full circle. So we'll see what the Chargers decide to do with him week one. I mean, it's all a game of chess, right? Who, yeah. who is going to get claimed on waivers? When is a better time? Because like by next week, these teams are pretty set in stone. Yeah. It's a lot harder to just add somebody off of waivers onto your active roster. Yeah, and this is someone. roster chess. This is all that is. 100%. And that's how the Chargers were able to get 
Gerard Clark back and Zach Bailey back. So glad we don't have to worry about that anymore. But they even got Christian Covington back, who now seems to be a mainstay, a staple of Brandon Staley's defense, is back for the third year in three years of Brandon Staley's has been the Chargers head coach. So we're going to get into the reunion with Christian Covington and also the Chargers getting some key players that we wanted to see back on the practice squad and getting them back and signed. We're going to get into that coming up right after this. Let's talk a little bit more about the practice squad, David. But first, I do need to tell you guys that you know what tomorrow is. It's Fan Mail Friday, and we want to get your guys' questions on the show. The everydayers out there, we appreciate you. And if you want to hit us up, on X or Twitter at LockedOnLAC. We'll put a post out tomorrow. You can get your questions in there, as well as hit us up on Instagram at LockedOnChargers. Give us your question there. You can do it in the YouTube comments right now if you're watching on YouTube. But tomorrow we will be getting into that, or you can call the voicemail line at 323-524-7924. We are looking forward to get your guys' questions. A tier. Yes, I have your voicemail. But let's get back to this practice squad, David, because... There was definitely a name that I'm familiar with, but it surprised me to see that made it onto this practice squad, and that is defensive lineman Christian Covington, who came in a couple of years ago, 2021, as you know, somewhat of a stabilizing player to that defensive line. There was a lot of flux Brandon Staley's first year, getting the players he yeah. liked right and getting, you know, someone that could just be dependable. I right. would say trying to get his right guys word. to run his defense, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, they didn't, I don't know if they had any past before, you know, when they brought him in the first time. But now, this is three years in a row that, you know, Christian Covington will be some part of this roster. That was kind of surprising to see. It was definitely a little bit surprising for me, but the one thing that I remember uh, Brandon Staley saying uh, about Christian Covington is, or just about how they want to transform the defensive line, and it's about bringing that size. They really want <laughs> yeah. to be intimidating, and Christian Covington is gigantic. This dude is a walking refrigerator, so yeah. he definitely fits the bill of the type of defensive lineman that the Chargers want to bring in and that Brandon Staley wants to use, and obviously there is some familiarity there. I mean, he played four games with the Chargers last year. Do not look at his PFF grades. They are mm -hmm. horrendous. They are definitely very scary, but this is another move that makes sense because you, know, you have some guys that are returning from injury, also some guys that are still injured in that defensive line room, so bringing yeah. in a guy that already has experience and already understands your system again that's just smart business i like it too i mean a guy that obviously can step in off the practice squad and he knows the defense that's yes. the first thing right an easy plug and play type of dude i do think it says something about the chargers roster construction that this is a dude that was starting legitimate games for you only two years ago yeah and now it'll i mean still be tough for him to make it on the active roster without other guys in front of him getting injured, you know, and especially with someone like Tito Abonia coming back potentially in a month. Yeah. And we'll see about that. You know, I feel like that's still very much up in the air. Definitely. But I think it does bring us to the other defensive lineman I want to talk about today. A guy that, you know, maybe yesterday we were a little annoyed that they weren't back with the Chargers on the active roster. Or at least, you know, yeah, it didn't make the initial cut. But Gerard Clark and Zach Bailey are both back now, David. The Chargers obviously had a good read on those guys not getting picked up. Bailey, I mean, surprises me a lot because I feel like every team can use stable backup offensive linemen, and I think he showed he could absolutely be that in the preseason. But let's start with Clark since we're talking about defensive linemen here. I mean, a guy, David, that I think showed great promise in run defense in the preseason and a guy that I think it's the right move to be trying to develop him on the practice squad and see if you can get something more out of it. Definitely, yes. I mean, Gerard Clark, another guy who is massive, a guy that can split double teams and seems like he has a knack against the run. 38 run defensive snaps, had seven tackles, two of those for stops, and no missed tackles at all. So yeah. I, I like that. I mean, like I said, I feel like he has a ton of potential. Uh, I think Gerard Clark is definitely a guy that if anybody gets injured in that room, that you can feel pretty good about what he is able to offer you. Also, you know, he was able to bring a little bit as a pass, uh, pass rusher as well. He had four pressures during the preseason as well. Yeah, I think he did have two missed tackles. I will have to double check because I think that's why one of the games his, his defensive grade wasn't very good. But, like, I did see him forklift a guard and just throw him out of the way, and that's something you can't teach, right? And, yeah. I mean, I think when you look at it, Sebastian Joseph Day, big cap hit in 2024. Austin Huge. Johnson, off the books in 2024. A yeah. lot of guys that won't be sticking around super long. Morgan Fox is locked up the next few years, obviously, but that's pretty much it. Then it's you know Scott Matlock and Tito Abonia, and I think the yeah. Tito Abonia part will be interesting to see if Gerard Clark sticks around on this practice yeah. squad, right? Because 
once Tito Abonia comes back, say they waive Christopher Hinton, for example, to bring him back on the squad, yeah. somebody's going to have to make room, right, to get Tito or to get Christopher Hinton back on the practice yeah. squad, which we would assume they're going to try to do. Will it be Christian Covington? Will it be Gerard Clark? I think that's kind of where we'll see how they feel about him when those decisions have to be made. But Agreed. the other guy, Zach Bailey, very excited about this. I mean, I think, I, you know, it's less than a week ago as anointing him as the Chargers swing tackle, <laughs> potentially even swing guard just for the Chargers to turn around and release him during the initial round of cuts. But, David, this one I'm excited about. I mean, you can never have too much depth on the offensive line and knowing this guy is sticking around. Just for example, right? Like, say a tackle gets hurt. The Chargers don't want to put Jamari Sawyer out at tackle. So then they end up putting Foster Sarah. What if he's a or Foster Sarah, What if he's a disaster, right? You do have Zach Bailey kind of waiting in the wings to hopefully get a crack at that if they're not going to use Jordan McFadden or Jamari Sawyer in that role. I don't know, David. It does just make me feel better, I think, knowing this guy is still kind of in the building, still can be called upon if necessary. Very, very happy about this move. Obviously, I was not happy that he did not make the 53-man roster because I feel like he earned it. I mean, he was spectacular for the Bolts in the preseason. He played 91 snaps at right guard, 65 at right tackle, only allowed one sack and two pressures during during those. I mean, that's fantastic. And then yeah. as a run blocker, I mean, he might as well have been working for IHOP because he was serving out pancakes <laughs> left and right. He was absolutely dominating guys. A 90.3 run block grade. I mean, he was spectacular. I mean, That's I'm really very happy about this move. I'm glad to have him back. He's the type of guy that has some experience, but I also feel like he's really starting to come into his own as a as a player. I mean, PFF grades obviously always taken with a grain of salt, but to have that many rim blocking snaps and have a 90 plus grade, like that's something you're seeing from dudes like that's Quentin elite. Nelson in the regular season, you know, obviously going up against practice squad and, you know, second and third. Right. String guys, you should be like, dominating, though. That's he what did. you want it to look like. And that's what yes. he went out there and did. So. I like Zach Bailey a lot. Obviously, he's bounced around if you want to use that. I mean, it looks like he's developed. He was obviously better in 2023 than yeah. he was when we saw him in 2022. This dude's been here the last two years now. Night and day difference in a player. Best offensive line men in the preseason, period. Yeah. Like, that's just, yeah. and, and as far as, like, you know, having kind of a an identity, if you want to be a team that can run the football well, this is a dude I feel like you want to keep around. But yes. now we see the Chargers. The practice squad is mostly set, David. So if we assume that Xander Horvath is going to make it back to the Chargers, which he probably will, unless somebody's trying to pick up a fullback that hasn't played a lot of fullback, the Chargers will have two spots left, and it'll be interesting. They don't have any linebackers, but they have six linebackers now on the active roster. They don't have any running backs, but they have four running backs on the active roster. But this does, David, I think, give them a little bit of flexibility, but I think the frustration just comes because it's like, but, it, you know, maybe a veteran tight end, you know, something that you could potentially Hello? use if you need. I don't know. <laughs> I think that's the only frustrating part. That's definitely the frustrating part. Obviously, you, you look at the practice squad and you see Hunter Camp Moyer on there, but you kind of know who Which Hunter Camp Moyer yeah. is at this point. Bring somebody else in, please. Yeah. Like, I mean, that just seems like the most obvious situation. There was a ton of guys that got waived, and it seems like there is no way that there is not somebody out there that could be a better blocking tight end than Trey McKitty. I'm sorry. I just haven't seen enough from him. They have to upgrade that spot. I feel like they did a good job of providing some depth at safety. They still need to provide some depth and, and get some just better overall talent at the tight end position. They should be looking at adding that to the practice squad. Trey McKitty kind of seems like it's like, you know, was a sunken cost fallacy, right? Where it's just like you put something into it. You want to see a return on that investment. Yeah. And you just might not get it. Like, I mean, both of us wouldn't have blinked if the Chargers went out and got a veteran run blocking tight end and just waved Trey McKitty from the team and the active all. roster altogether, right? Whether or not they brought him back on the practice squad wouldn't have really mattered, I don't think. But, like, if you want to develop him, develop him there. Who's picking up Trey McKitty at this point in his career with what we've seen in the last year plus between the preseason Nobody. and the last regular season? He just hasn't been a good player. Of course you hope. The Chargers are better if Trey McKitty figures it out. It just gets harder and harder to believe that's going to happen realistically. But that's going to wrap things up for today's show. Excited to see how these last few practice squad spots kind of play out. But that is going to do it. We'll be back with you guys tomorrow, of course, because the only Chargers podcast out there that happens every single day. And to make sure you guys don't miss it, subscribe or follow for free on the Lockdown Chargers YouTube channel and listen wherever you get your podcast from. And since tomorrow's Fan Mail Friday, make sure to hit us up on our social media where we also post the show as well. You can hit us up on X or Twitter at Lockdown LAC. You can slide into David Droegemeyer's DMs at DroTalkSD. You can hit me up on Twitter at DanTalkSports as well as hitting us up 
on Instagram at Locked On Chargers, on our Locked On Chargers Facebook page, or calling into the voicemail line at 323-524-7924. If you want to, you can even text that number. It all works, but try to keep it around 30 seconds in a reasonable question, and we'll try to get it on the show. But we will be back with you guys tomorrow for Fan Mail Friday. Excited for that. But until then, guys, take it easy and go Bolts.